Elisha and the Syrian army. 2 Kings 6 verses 8 to 23. Once there was a prophet named Elisha who lived long ago in the land of Israel. He taught the people to worship God and to obey God's laws. In his house at Dothan, Elisha often knelt to talk to the Lord and listen to his word. There he prayed that the Israelites might be protected from their fierce enemies, the Syrians. For a long time, Ben-Hadad, the cruel king of Syria, had been at war with the people of Israel. Now, he planned a surprise attack which he hoped would crush them once and for all. With his mighty, well-equipped army ready to fight, he was sure that this time they could wipe out Israel's army. He called the captains of his army together and they carefully planned where they would camp and how they would trap the unsuspecting Israelite army. King Ben-Hadad warned his men that not a word must leak out. The whole success of their plan depended on secrecy and surprise attack. While the Syrians secretly plotted, Elisha stood quietly by the window of his house. Then he called his servant and said to him, Go at once at our king and warn him that the king of Syria is planning a surprise attack on our army. Elisha was able to explain just where the Syrians would be lying in wait, for God had told his prophet Elisha of the Syrian plans. The young servant raced down the long, dusty road from Dothan to Samaria with a message for the king of Israel. He was allowed to see the king as soon as he arrived because the king knew Elisha was a true prophet of God. And when the servant told him about the Syrian plot, the king sent orders to the captains of his army. In the meantime, the Syrian army reached the place where they planned to hide. They moved cautiously as they hid among the shrubs and trees. They thought that soon the king and the army of Israel would pass close by. But they waited and waited and nothing happened. At last, the captain of the Syrian army sent a messenger back to ben to tell him they had waited for hours without seeing a sign of the Israelite army. Strange, Ben Haddad muttered. So he made new plans, making doubly sure, doubly sure to keep them secret. Again, the Syrian armies hid and waited while their scouts kept a watch on the road, but there was no cloud of dust raised by approaching horses and chariots. The king was furious when their plans failed again and again. There is a traitor in the camp. We refuse giving our secrets to Israel. The captains covered in fear, but then one of the soldiers remembered about Elisha and his power to work miracles. There is a prophet in Israel named Elisha. Nothing is hid from him. Why he knows everything that's going on even before it happens? Now, ben had had heard of Elisha and the God he served. He thought that if only he could take Elisha prisoner, the prophet would be powerless and they could carry out their plans. So he sent spies to the land of Samaria. Finally, one of, the found Elisha's one of them found Elisha's house in Dothan and stood outside the window. Was that the old man who knew all their secrets and told them? to the king of Israel, Ben-Hadad would, wouldn't need an army to take him prisoner. But Ben-Hadad ordered his soldiers with chariots and horses to move under the cover of darkness and capture Elisha. Very early 
The next morning, Elisha's young servant went to the window to open the shutters and he stared in wonder to sight that greeted his eyes. A great army surrounded the city. The morning sun shone on an array of shields and spears. There were chariots and horses as far as he could see. It was the enemy, the Syrian army. Could it be that this time Elisha hadn't known they were coming? Help, master, what can we do? The young man cried. There wasn't a chance of escape. The Syrians surrounded them. Every road and gate was blocked. But Elisha didn't even look worried. He said, Fear not. They that are with us are more than they have with them. <laughs> the servant stared at him. What was Elisha talking about? They were just two defenseless men against the whole army. Then Elisha said, They have just human power, but we have the Lord our God. Then Elisha prayed that God would open his servant's eyes. Go and look out of the window. The young man looked. The enemy was still there, but now he saw horses and chariots of fire standing ready to defend Elisha. Then, fearlessly, Elisha walked into the midst of the whole Syrian army. Smite them with blindness, he prayed. Suddenly, a terrifying darkness fell upon the soldiers. They didn't know where they were and could not see. Men shouted in fear and bewilderment, their ranks breaking in panic. You are going the wrong way. Follow me, Elisha told them quietly. He led them right into the city of Samaria, and then he prayed that their sight might be restored. The Syrians looked around in fear and terror. They were surrounded by the menacing spears of the Israelite army. Excitedly, King Joram sent for Elisha. What an opportunity! The whole Syrian army is his prisoners. But he didn't dare act without Elisha's consent. Shall we kill them? he asked. But Elisha would not permit the Syrian prisoners to be killed. Instead, he told King Joram to feed the enemy soldiers, and a great feast was set before them. And when they were refreshed, they were sent back to King Ben-Hadad so that he would come to know about the power and wisdom and mercy of God. And Elisha's young servant also learned a lesson that day. He discovered that the angel of the Lord protects those who love God and delivers them. As we see, the faith that Elisha had in the Lord and his unfailing confidence in God's power we should remember that God never changes. He is just as able to protect us today. We should never be afraid, for the Bible says, If God be for us, who can be against us? Romans 8.31 And that ends our story. Elisha and the Syrian Army